Video editing can be incredibly time consuming. So today I wanna to share five ways in which you can speed up your video editing workflow. So number one, use SSDs, not hard disk drives. Now, if you're not too sure what the difference is, SSD stands for solid state disk and HDD stands for hard disk drive. Now the reason using SSDs is gonna speed up your workflow is because the data transfer speeds on SSDs is way faster than hard disk drives. Hard disk drives often can only transfer data at about 80 to maybe 160 megabits per second while an SSD can transfer data between maybe 200 even up to 1000 megabits per second and in some cases you can get SSDs that are even faster than that and so if you're editing from any sort of external disk drive that's not on your computer SSDs are always going to be faster you'll get less lag in your video editing software and also while you're transferring and copying files around the place you're going to be able to do it so much faster using an SSD. So number two, make sure you make use of software outside of your video editing software. I use quite a few different programs in my video editing workflow, but the one that saves me the most time is ReCut. And this app is particularly useful if you often edit talking head videos or any videos where there's dialogue within them, because what ReCut does is it just takes out all the silent parts in a piece of footage. So for example, whenever I shoot a piece of A-roll, I'm talking to the camera like this, I'll drop the raw footage into ReCut, ReCut will just take out all the silent parts and then I can export an XML, which I can then put into Final Cut or Prem or whatever software I'm using. And all the cuts are automatically done for me. All I have to do is go through and take out any bad takes. And this honestly saves me hours of time a week. The way I used to do it would be to manually go through and cut out all the silent parts. And this could take me an hour to an hour and a half per video. If you do want to try ReCut, use my link in the description for $10 off. So tip number three is to use a bigger screen. And I know this might might seem kind of obvious, but to me, there's kind of two main benefits to using a larger screen for video editing. The first is you've got all your tools at your disposal easily and you don't have to switch between windows all the time. I've worked across all sorts of screens from just a laptop screen all the way up to my current 38 inch ultra wide and being able to have open all the windows that I regularly use in the one window is just so good. Back when I was working just on my laptop, I had to actually create separate workspaces with all the different windows windows that I needed, but now I can just have all the different features in different windows that I need in the one screen. The second main reason why a bigger screen makes such a big difference is because you've got all this space with the timeline. And this means you're actually saving a small amounts of time here and there in terms of zooming in and out, scrolling back and forth with the timeline. You can have more of it open at once, which is super handy. Now tip number four is to use a mouse with extra buttons. If you're still just using a mouse with a left and right click button and maybe a scroll wheel, then I reckon it's probably time to upgrade if you want to save time. Now, like most of these tips, you might be saving hours of time per project, but you'll be saving a few minutes here and there. And over the course of multiple projects, over an extended period of time, you are gonna be saving hours of time. For me, I have a Logitech MX Master 3, and I have my mouse set up for Final Cut, where the two buttons on the side of the mouse are used to zoom in and out of the timeline really quickly. And then there's a scroll wheel on the side of the mouse as well, which I used to scroll left and right quickly through the timeline. Then I also have another button under my thumb, which I can click down and that opens up my window viewer so I can easily jump between different apps or different software that I'm using while editing. And last but not least, a tip I'm sure you've heard before, but that is to create keyboard shortcuts. And for me, that's still like a work in progress. I'm still learning different shortcuts to utilize into my editing workflow. But the more shortcuts you can use, I've definitely found the faster you can edit. I think it's just a matter of getting used to your chosen editing software. And the more you get comfortable in it, the more you figure out which are the different tools that you use on a regular basis and the ones that you can map to a keyboard shortcut. For example, for me in Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software that I most commonly use, when it comes to making cuts, the way I used to do it was to hit the B button, make my cut, hit the A button to select the tool again, select the section that I wanted to take out and then hit the, the delete key. Whereas now I've set up a keyboard shortcut, which is Command B, and this makes a cut wherever my cursor is. So now all I have to do is place a cursor over where I wanna make a cut, Command B, Command B, and then I can just hit delete. And again, this might save me like one second for every cut. But if I'm doing a hundred cuts across one video, and then you multiply that across multiple videos, multiple projects, it definitely all adds up. And I think that's a thing when it comes to speeding up your editing workflow, it's about shaving off seconds here and there so that over time it all compounds and you end up saving hours. If you do work from home a lot, feel free to check out this video where I talk about five ways that you can make your home office more productive. 
But other than that, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you very soon in the next video.